Hello beautiful and lovely people and welcome back to my channel Oshale here and this is Oshi Reads and in today's video I figured it was finally oh, let me not fall and trip over my own feet I figured it was finally time that I did the popular I can't remember the name of the damn tag the unpopular opinions tag I believe that's what it's called right correct me if I'm wrong it'll be correct by the time I put up this video because I have to make the title I digress the unpopular opinions book tag which was started by the lovely 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 lady over at the book archer I'm so sorry I'm blanking on her name at the moment but I believe her channel has been dormant for a while now and girl I really hope that you come back to booktube I really enjoyed watching your videos so I hope that you find it in your heart to come back to us soon. But yes, she started this tag. It's a massively t um, popular tag. I've seen a ton of booktubers do it, both big, small, medium-sized booktubers. So this tag is well-loved in our community, and I'm so glad that you started it. All right, so let's jump right into the tag. I got these questions from a book blogger on the internet versus actually getting the questions underneath someone's video in the description box so I really hope that these questions are correct and in the correct order. If they are not, please correct me in the comments if you care. Question number one is what is a popular what is a popular book or series that you did not like? And for me, I have two answers to this one. The first one is The Mortal Instruments by Cassandra Clare. I'm gonna try not to fall over my own feet in this video. The second one is The Darkest Minds Trilogy by Alexander Bracken and I feel so guilty saying that because I love Alexander Bracken as a person. I love her writing style and her voice. She's a very talented writer but I just didn't care for the series past the first book which is really unfortunate but I love Alexander Bracken as a person. I follow her on Instagram. She's great, so I feel a little bad saying that, but it is what it is. Cassandra Clare, the Mortal Instruments series. I just, you know, I even own some of the books, so I'm probably going to have to unhaul them at some point. I've tried numerous times over the years since the series first came out to read the books, and I just, I just can't. Number two is what is a popular book or series that everyone seems to hate but you love? And for me, this one is a very just like big one and it's a Twilight series. I feel that it became cool to hate on Twilight. Um, no, it wasn't the most well-written series in the world. And yes, the tropes were cringy and the characters were very, you know, you have Bella who's very Mary Sue and you have Edward who is over the top ideal. But, I don't know, the Twilight series brings back so many memories for me, good and bad, but mostly nostalgic. It brings me back to a simpler time in my life. Not a happier time, but just, it's hard to explain. It just brings back a lot of good memories. So, I don't know, I really, I love the series. I'm sorry, I love Twilight. And I'm not ashamed to say it. I will say it to anyone who asks me. And sometimes people do, and especially when they see me rereading. I've reread the first book numerous times. Not so much the second book's not my favorite. The third and the fourth I've reread a few times. The fourth made me throw it against the wall a few times, so I've only reread it twice. But I've reread the first book probably three or four times. I've listened to the audiobook of the first book three or four times. Especially around this time of year, I just get into the mood to listen to slash read Twilight. And you know what? I'm unashamed. I'm not going to hide it anymore. I like Twilight. Number three, what is a love triangle in a book series where the main character ended up with the person you did not want them to end up with? And I feel like everyone's answer for this question across the board has been the same, and that is the Hunger Games series. I am not going to spoil it for the three people that haven't read it yet, but yeah, what a disappointment. Am I right? Or am I right? Question number four is, what is a popular book genre that you hardly reach for? And this genre is not as popular anymore, but dystopian, and that is exactly why I don't reach for it. They seem to have been a dystopian fervor and obsession about five or so years ago, especially in young adult. I would say it started and kind of mostly stayed in the young adult genre, and we just devoured every dystopian novel we could find. 
authors and publishing houses kept pumping them out and I feel like every it just got oversaturated the market got oversaturated and it got to be too much and the quality of dystopian novels and most of them were series started to go downhill and so we just all got sick of it and now it's like the forgotten genre so I don't really reach for it anymore because I feel like I overdosed on it during that time and another genre I have my notes here sci-fi sci-fi has never really been that popular of a genre it has its peaks and its moments throughout the years but it's never really been like in the rage at least not that I can think of but um yeah I don't really reach for sci-fi I feel like the genre itself doesn't really appeal to me but certain plots within the genre appeal to me and certain writers I will read whatever they write so if they write a sci-fi novel I'm going to read it Question number five. What is a popular or beloved character that you do not like? Well, I have a list here for you. So let us begin. Triss from Divergent. I didn't like her. I didn't care for her. She's not my favorite. I don't know what else I can say to just, just, I, she wasn't my cup of tea. And I feel like that was a big part of the reason why I didn't really care for that series, besides the fact that it really should have just been one book that was about 400 to 500 pages. It should have just been one book, 400 to 500 pages, or it should have been a duology. It just shouldn't have been a trilogy. It just it got worse as the books went on. I could go on a whole rant about the Divergent series, but I won't. Um, Ruby from The Darkest Minds. Another reason why The Darkest Minds is not my favorite. Another series that I believe could have just been one to two books. The first book was really great, really solid, a great debut, although I don't think that was her debut actually. I don't, I think it was like her second book that she had published, but I digress. It just, ah, as it went on and by the time we got to the third book, I was over it. I didn't care anymore and I never even liked Ruby to begin with, so there's that. Um, most of the female protagonists in Colleen Hoover novels, with the exception of It Ends With Us, which was on my favorites list for 2017 so if you haven't um if you haven't watched that video yet on my channel on my channel I will link it right now I loved that book and I still love that book and I stand by that even after watching even after watching the insane reader rag on Colleen Hoover for about 30 to 40 minutes I still like that book and I stand by it but um pretty much one of the only Colleen novel Colleen Hoover novels I can stand but most of our female protagonists just irk me to my soul they just they just bother me they bother me so much and I just they ruin her books for me you know along with a, a host of other issues but um oh this is a good one Professor McGonagall from Harry Potter just never particularly care for her you know the movies I think make her a little bit more endearing and she gets a little bit more endearing as the books go on and shit really starts to get real in the series but I still just never connected with her like that not that deeply she just she wasn't really my cup of tea and then, last but not least, Leah, the princess from The Kiss of Deception. I didn't care for her too much either. Um, thankfully, that didn't ruin the series for me. That's one of my favorite young adult series of all time. I absolutely love and adore that series. And now, anything Mary E. Pearson writes, I will go and buy. But Leah just wasn't my favorite. She got on my nerves so many times. Some of the decisions... And by some, I mean all of the decisions that me she made really pissed me off. And when she made them really pissed me off. And just, she irked me. Moving on. Question number six. Who is a popular author that you just can't seem to get into? I got another list. Brandon Sanderson, number one. I just, I can't, you guys. I've tried. I've tried so many times. I've tried so, 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 so many times. And I'm to the point now where I'm just going to give up. I don't know what it is. I can't, I can't seem to get into his writing. I just, I don't know. Another one is J.R.L. Tolkien for the same reason. Like, I feel so ashamed even saying that because the Lord of the Rings series is such a classic series and such a big deal, but I just, I can't seem to get into his writing. Um, next is Colleen Hoover. Next is Adam Silvera. I just, I feel like he's overhyped. And I just, I don't, I don't know. I, is it because he's like the one popular author doing what he's doing and doing it well? I don't 
is that is that what it is because I feel like I've read indie authors who write gay romance and even gay young adult romance way better than him that was awkward John Green I cannot get into John Green for the life of me y'all I've tried so many times his writing just seems very his writing just seems very unrealistic to me and I just can't seem to get into it the way that he writes the way that he writes the teen and young adult characters you know their dialogue and the way they interact I just it doesn't feel authentic and and I get it he has a very distinct style and a very distinct voice and you know what it's just not for me it's just not for me number seven is what is a popular book trope that you are tired of seeing and for me this one is most definitely the toxic bad boy who changes for the pure virginal good girl I feel like a lot of the newer YA books that are coming out now have this trope slathered all over it and for the most part it doesn't 100% completely prevent me from in from not enjoying the story especially if it's a great plot and the characters are compelling and the writing is good or even just decent it doesn't necessarily stop me from enjoying the book or the story but I'm just tired of it I feel like the trope needs to be turned on its head a bit it needs to be reimagined it needs to be just it just needs to be done a little bit more creatively I wouldn't even mind if it was like the toxic bad boy who meets the pure virginal good girl who he's not really sexually attracted to but he likes her as a friend and then she makes him realize that he's a horrible person and he goes through all these personal trials and then he changes and then he meets the female version of himself who he falls for but she's the female version of himself well before he changed so he meets his own match so he gets a taste of his own medicine blah 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 see just just change it a little bit because it's it's just so tired it's overplayed and it's not even realistic like those type of guys more than likely don't necessarily find interest in a girl who has no real life or relationship experience I'm not saying that that doesn't happen but what would they have in common? I just, I could go on about this for hours. I don't want to make this video too long, but I'm tired of that trope. They need to do something about that. It needs to be remixed a bit. Question number eight is what is a popular book or series that you have no interest in reading? And for me, this is honestly the series by Cassandra Clare, The Mortal Devices or Instruments, Infernal Devices. I think it's the Mortal Instruments series and then the Infernal Devices series. No interest, I tried. It didn't work out. I'm letting it go. Now I have heard that her writing has gotten a lot better and I know a lot of people really love those books so I'm kind of waiting for her to move on from that world and write something else so that I can try something new by her and like finally get into her and her writing but when it comes to those two particular series I'm leaving those alone. And last but not least question number nine what is a movie or TV show adaptation of a book or series that you like more than the books and for this I also have a list um, the Lord of the Rings films I like more than the books simply just because I couldn't get into the books I might probably try again in like five or eight years and see what happens but when I tried and the numerous times I've tried I just couldn't get into them but I really love the films they're some of my favorite films and across the board they're excellent Next is the Gossip Girl TV series. I love way more than the books and I loved the books when I was a teen. I devoured those books. They were like the perfect trashy yet complex teen dramas and the tea in that series was piping hot in every single book. I, they were addictive and the writing was actually good so the character development was good as well. The crazy ridiculous things happened but the writing was solid. And then the Vampire Diaries TV series I love way more than the books. I never really enjoyed the books that much, but the TV series I was obsessed with when I was a teenager and I've seen almost every season. I need to catch up on like the last two seasons, but I loved that TV show and I still do. That's it for the unpopular opinions tag and I don't really want to tag anyone because I feel like this tag has been around forever and it's super popular and most people have done it so if you are new to booktube or you are new to this tag and you didn't really know about it before I open up the door and you are free to do this tag I tag you 
right now. So go ahead and do it if you have a channel or if you have a book blog. And you can, um, if you make a video, put the link in my comments. And if you have a book blog and you decide to do the tag on there, then put the link in my comments. Or if you have a bookstagram or anything like that, I would love to see your answers and responses. And that's it for this video. I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye, guys. Peace. <laughs> Bye. Your story. Tip number four is to make sure, make sure that you hit that daily word count goal. I believe when you break 50,000 words up into 30 days, it evens out to be about 1,666 words a day. Now, it might seem like, oh, you know, I got 500.